Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our reaction and review for Criminal Record Season 1, Episode 5. I, I think this is an episode that a lot of us kind of saw coming when it comes to how much Daniel Haggerty is going to go through in order to ensure that June stops her efforts to dig into what happened to Adelaide Burroughs. I will admit there were parts of this story even still, despite like the larger events I saw coming, I was legitimately surprised by a couple of different things through this. Yeah, there was only a few things I was like, oh, you know, I didn't really see that coming. But for the most part, the main storyline has felt pretty much like how I think a lot of us thought that it was going to go. I mean, they had been really setting it up from the beginning that, you know, Daniel knows some stuff and he's matched up with some, you know, pretty horrible friends. You know, does that make him a horrible person? Yeah. <laughs> and for this episode, especially yeah. like, you know, we saw him like wreck Kim's car and stuff like yeah. that. I'm like, that absolves you of really not much of anything. Like yeah. it feels like you really knew a lot of stuff or you turned a blind eye to yeah. stuff that you purposefully were doing this because you knew something was happening. Like Daniel's just this episode. I was really like, Oh, he's just, you know, pretty much all bad. Like he's just not a great guy. He's not, you know, a great detective. He's willing to put innocent people away and he's willing to, you know, he almost killed June over this. He's willing to kill another cop over, you know, putting away someone that I he's known for a long time in his heart. I think in his head was not the right person. And that's why he's been, you know, helping Patrick, you know, setting him up with his apartment, you know, talking to him whenever he needs it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like th this whole character just seems to be about rationalization. It's just all about, okay, what can I do to get through the day? Knowing that I've done some of the things that I've done, how yes. can I explain all of it away? And, you know, congratulations, Daniel, whatever you're telling yourself, I guess you're continuing to wake up every single morning, but like at the same time, it doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't make you innocent. It doesn't make you any of these sort of things. You know, you're no. still involved you're still complicit like i yeah. still want you to be arrested at the end of this show i don't know whether or not we're actually going to see that happen listen sometimes bad people get away with bad things we're also covering true to detective here yeah. season one you know one of the bad guys got caught another one didn't and now they're you know surfacing again here and it's like sometimes bad people get away with doing bad things you know yeah. it's just for me my biggest question about this show is why aren't people watching Criminal Record? Yeah. Like the performances on the show, even though the the story can be kind of a little bit hit and miss, there's things that really yeah. hit when they hit, and other things are kind of like eh. It feels kind of predictable. The performances on this show are a plus ten yeah. out of ten. Why are people not watching this show? It's really confusing to me. Well, we're gonna get right into that and some of the other stuff that happened in this episode, but just be sure. To hit that subscribe button, you guys don't want to miss anything else we have coming here on Criminal Record. We are already past the halfway point of the season. There's yep. only a few more episodes to go. Yeah. Okay. So I just, and just jumping onto your question here for a moment. Like this is the, the biggest thing I think Criminal Record kind of has going against it at this point, mm -hmm. especially now that we're five episodes in. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about either the poster or the title or anything that actually kind of explains what this show <laughs> is really about. Listen, the title is not good and the poster <laughs> is very generic. Like they really, you know, they may have well just called this crime show. Like yeah. it when I first heard the title, I was like, oh, it's just, it's not good. It's just not really searchable for people that are looking yeah. for it. Just kind of gets lost. It's not memorable. I even find myself calling it criminal minds like half the time where i'm just yeah. like it's it the title is not good it just doesn't link into the show all that much either like even and i'm, I'm yeah. not saying i'm an expert on these things and i know titles have to be cleared and there's like a whole process to make sure you don't get in trouble but like to me if this show was called you know forced confession or if it was called something like you know complicit or something that was just more directly or complicit by associate. I don't know. Just something, yeah, something else. Yeah. Something that actually, you know, gets people like being like, Hmm, that's interesting. Like forced confession. Like that's something that's actually been out there in the news the past couple of years. Like I watched the whole John Oliver segment all about mm -hmm. that. And it just, that speaks to something I think a lot stronger than criminal record. And I honestly, if you're just like scrolling around Apple TV plus and you're <laughs> seeing a bunch of different stuff, you're going to see, 
you know, Monarch colon legacy of monsters with Godzilla in the picture or Ted Lasso, which everybody knows. But you're like, OK, I'm going to watch a show called Silo, which is pretty clearly about some sort of silo. I'm going to watch giant monsters try to kill each other or I'm going to watch Criminal Record. It's a hard choice for it. Yeah. Criminal Record doesn't tell the viewers anything really about yeah. the show. You know, it feels like they're mostly leaning into the fact that they have two really big stars on this yeah. because the poster is just their floating faces. Yeah. Like there's nothing really else that's coming into this poster i'm like oh that's really interesting so unless you're a fan of you know kush or uh, peter it's kind of like okay well then why are you turning into the show because the yeah. title tells you nothing and the poster tells you nothing yeah and it, it does a disservice to the show itself because i think while it may have its flaws and it certainly does when it comes to like some of the external characters around yeah, our leads does. like i think the core of it is really June's husband. Yeah, I know. Like That's the thing. June's husband's really bad. It's just like, I don't know what they were trying to do there. But the core of the show, I think, is really fascinating where you have this guy now <laughs> in Peter, who in this episode, he feels like he finally has exactly what he wants, which is he's got a way to really completely pin everything on June. Like he's managed to make it so that, okay, June has gone after Tony at this point. She's mm -hmm. asked him a lot of really tough questions. You know, then we have Daniel who's like, okay, I can nail her for he, you know, she's asking too much. He's harassing. I can finally put a stop to all this. I can get her demoted. I can get her taken off this entirely. And then, you know, he, Kim finds out about some of this and what mm -hmm. we have seen from Kim, this man has no chill whatsoever. And he's just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go make sure that her son gets arrested. 12 years old yeah. puts, you know, a pretty big crime on him, putting drugs in his backpack. Yeah. He doesn't know what is going on. You know, you see him and his friends walking down the street talking about eating sweets. You know, they're yeah. they're young guys or they're children, right? Yeah. That it's like, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got, you know, the cops are rolling up. They're like, oh, you can go, you can go. But June's son, no, you can't yeah. go. Let me see your backpack, planting these drugs. You know, he's unable to get a hold of his mom. He doesn't know what is going on. He ends up deciding to call his grandma. I was actually kind of surprised he didn't call his stepdad who... Yeah. Um, you know, for kind of the flaws in the writing for him, truly loves him. Like, yeah. you know, he was like waiting for him at his game. Like we've seen his interactions with him and how much he really loves this kid. So like he would have been there in a in a second. Right. Yeah. And he was even waiting for him. So it's like, you know, I was kind of surprised that the call was to the grandmother who clearly doesn't yeah. leave her house has extreme anxiety about being outside the house which i you know it's really interesting concept because it's not really on a lot of shows and i think there's a lot of people out yeah. there that suffer from that yeah and i the thing i just i get really hung up with when it comes to what kim cardwell does here is just mm -hmm. like how unbelievably stupid it is like i just like it's i mean so so reckless yeah. and so dumb and you know you're gonna ruin a kid's whole yeah. life like that to get at june like it's so evil yeah it's unbelievably evil there's all these different layers to it there's you know there's the clear and obvious social issues that are present with him doing this there's also just if the intention here is okay this is going to make it so that June is like, okay, this case is too hot. I'm not going to investigate anything. That is the worst thing you can possibly do. Is the, that's going to just enrage her. Like you, you yes. can't do that with somebody's child. Like that is, and, and uh, Daniel knows this. And this is why Daniel is so infuriated about it after the fact. He's just like, you, I, why did you think this was a good idea? Like it is unbelievably reckless i said i was going to handle it and no you had to go rogue whether it's because your ego got in the way you think that i'm being i don't know too soft on the issue or whatever else but i just i can't get over just how dumb cardwell is like i really can't no it's completely completely idiotic like i don't know why he thought this kind of you know, it, it wasn't even a threat at this point of like, oh, this is yeah. going to happen to your son. He just did it to him. Like now this kid's in, you know, the system with a record with like, you know, his DNA is in the system. Like how in, in what universe is June then going to be like, oh, maybe I should just back out of this. Yeah. You already did the deed. Now it's yeah. just revenge, like straight revenge. Yeah, it's just going to be 
more intense, obviously, from here on out for a number of different reasons. But for Daniel in particular, I think this episode paints a pretty clear picture as to where exactly he is. And that this character, he really seems to be operating under this logic of, okay, just because I didn't directly do something, that means... I am better. I'm not as bad as these other people, whether it is this Kim Cardwell situation where, you know, I didn't have, you know, Jake arrested. I didn't do these sort of things. So, you know, I'm not I'm not that bad. Right. Or, you know, with Tony, who's a part who was a part of a very evil group. And we learned a lot about that early on in this episode. But it's like. Daniel tries to come up with some rationalization on it on whether or not it's like, oh, I wasn't in it or, oh, Tony was undercover or whatever else he's trying to like spew himself. And he's just like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I'm still a cop. I'm still doing the right thing. And I think he's doing that same thing when it comes to Adelaide Burroughs' death. Like, you know, we both have said this. We don't think that, you know, he was the murderer, but we think that he clearly knew something. And I think he thinks though, that because he didn't actually do it, that it's like, it's okay. I'm not I'm not that bad. It's it's fine. I'm trying to do the right thing here. Yeah, no. Tony or Kim are involved in what happened to Adelaide. I mean, you can Daniel, <laughs> I know you're watching this video. Yeah, Listen, like I know you think that you can kind of be like, well, if I didn't see it, then I didn't know what was happening. BS. Yeah. You absolutely knew that this was happening. There's no way that you didn't know. Yeah. And even if you didn't know the extent to where yeah. Tony's involved in this like extremely evil group, you knew that he had these types of feelings and yeah. was doing these types of things. Like, just stop. You can't not, yeah. you know, being like, oh, I just, I'm not looking, you know, yeah. whatever. You're his friend. Like, stop <laughs> it. You've heard things. You've seen things. You can't yeah. turn a blind eye or you're just as guilty as him. So, like, you know, you're just a bad dude. Yeah. he He's just operating under all of this, like, willful ignorance where he just sort of deliberately made it that he didn't dig into things so that he didn't, what well, he didn't have to find out the full truth. And he's like, it's okay. And even with, you know, Errol Mathis, like, I think, you know, he... Had the confession. He's like, okay, that's enough for me. You know, there's something suspicious over here. Maybe it's with Kim. Maybe it's it's fine. I'm not going to look that much into it. I have a confession. It's fine. I can just put this guy away, move on with my life. No more stress for me. I mean, clearly assuming that there would never be a Hayes Lane call or that, you know, June Linker would never get away from this case. Like, there, it took a very specific chain reaction for all of this stuff to come up in the first place, which is why Daniel clearly thought, okay, all of this is going to be buried and I'm just going to get away with it. Yeah, and I think that that's part of why he's had a relationship with Patrick all this time and he's been doing things for him, hooking him up with this apartment, trying to like help the kid as much as possible. I think for a couple reasons. I think one is guilt, a little bit of guilt. I don't yeah. know how much guilt Daniel really feels, but I think it's also to keep the kid close so that if he comes up with any sort of information, they have a trust and that he will come to him with it and then Daniel will be able to squash it. Okay, let's get into what's happening here with Daniel's daughter, because I think all of this is incredibly, incredibly complicated, but I think it all sort of ties into a lot of the questions we've had for the entirety of this show, including why does Daniel have this job as a driver in his off hours? Mm -hmm. And I think some of it is tied to this idea where he's clearly spending a reasonable amount of money on getting these drugs. And yeah. it seems like he's getting them for the sake of his daughter. And this is just my theory on a lot of this right now. It's just that oh, I will we'll put on our yeah, tinfoil yeah. hats here. Okay. Cause yeah, it's not clear. This yeah. at this point is really just a theory. Here's what I think is going on is that I think his daughter is an addict. I think Daniel knows obviously that his daughter is an addict and he doesn't really know how to handle it. Like he's probably, he's been brought up clearly in a time in which, you know, a lot of these sort of issues like conquering addiction there, there weren't, a lot of resources. And I also don't think he's really actively seeking a lot of them out. I think he's doing in his head the best thing that he can. And he's just sort of sitting here and thinking, okay, if my, if my daughter is going to be an addict, I need to make sure that she doesn't die. I need to make sure that I do something to ensure that she is okay. So I'm going to supply her with this. She can use while she's here I will give her these. I can look after her after the fact. It will be a safe site to do this. And I think he has this arrangement with her at this point where she is looking after 
to some extent here, Patrick. And, you know, we can say that she she might very well have feelings for Patrick and still be roped into this. I don't think it, these are like mutually exclusive things, but I think in exchange for her doing this, you know, she's getting supplied. Like that scene where he gives her the drugs and she sort of kisses him on the cheek. It feels very transactional in that way where she's just like, okay, thank you for this. I'm going to go and use now. And even when she's with Patrick, like she kind of has this moment where she's just like, oh, you know, I'm bad. I don't know why you would want to be around me. And I think it's, she knows she's harboring some sort of guilt over what she's doing, but you know, we're in the spot where Daniel has a use for her. He's helping her with something that clearly she is struggling with. And he's, I think at the end of the day, he's just trying to keep his daughter in his mind safe. And I think that's another part of why he gets so upset about what Kim did, because, you know, June's trying to keep her son safe. I think where this show is ultimately going now with all of this is that we see that, you know, Sonia has been working to sort of follow around Daniel to sort of mm -hmm. get a sense as to what Daniel has going on. And she sort of has established now, okay, there's this connection between Daniel and this drug trade. And we end up in this situation where June and Daniel have to meet and negotiate so that this guy can get out there and return for, you know, Daniel making sure that nothing ends up sticking when it comes to Jake and his permanent mm -hmm. record. But all this is going to get very, very complicated because like if something happens to this connection and Daniel's not able to then supply his daughter, like he's going to then feel like this is a, you know, a direct attack on him, a direct attack on what he's trying to do for his daughter. And then that's going to sort of amplify the emotional stakes here a little bit further. Like what, what I just sort of wonder here is that if Daniel didn't directly do anything to Adelaide Burroughs, like if he's not the killer, even if he's involved in the cover up and everything else, like at what point are you like, okay, maybe I'm going to lose my career over this, but maybe if I strike a deal, I can avoid jail time and I can still, you know, manage to go on and live my life in some other way. At what point is it just worth it for you to be like, everything I did was wrong. I'm going to turn in these other people and I'm going to try to step forward because it, yeah, it feels like you're going to lose this battle. I don't know what the consequences are, but I think he is going to lose. Okay. I'm putting on my beef hat. Okay. Okay. The, the new beef hat that has been established this week. <laughs> this husband of June, okay. I think his name is Leo. He is one of the worst written characters that I've seen in a really long time. Uh, like he just feels very sort of stereotypical yeah. when it comes to, you know, like someone who's like a white guy who's in a relationship with someone who isn't, or someone who is, you know, biracial, you know, I'm yeah. biracial. My dad is white. My mom's not, she's from Guyana. And I feel like if, You've been married to somebody for as long as you have been at this point, as well as you've heard and seen everything yep. that your wife has told you that has been going on with Daniel, having guys posted outside yep. the house, having her sort of kicked off the job, like all these things that have happening for yep. her husband to basically be like, could it be one of his mates? I was like what who wrote this like <laughs> stop like that's clearly not what's going on here like Jews is being very clear about what's happening yeah. the actions have happened right in front of him why yeah. is he being written like this that he's like not supportive he's he's got blinders yeah. on but you've been married to this person for so long like it's just it doesn't feel like very genuine like i'm not saying that those types of relationships don't end up happening yeah but it just feels really weird in this case it feels really heavy handed to me and it doesn't this show doesn't have to be that way because I think it's still getting its message across under other forms. Like yes, like with Daniel yeah, like, and Cam and Tony. Yeah, like even even the scene when June's having a direct conversation with Jake after everything that happens and she's trying to give him advice. Like yeah. that scene is a million times more effective at getting that message across yes. that, you know, the trouble that kids in particular can deal with just, just because of something like skin color, because right. of the way that police treat them. Like it's right. That was so much more effective than anything that, that happened. Scene was very good. Yeah. Anything that happened with the husband, like that just felt like it was overly drawn out. It didn't feel realistic. It didn't feel genuine. And it just felt like 
the show was trying to hammer something home that it didn't need to hammer home because it was so effective in other parts of this episode. And that's where I think it gets itself in some trouble, where I think they felt like we have to give June this sort of family background so that we have an understanding as to where she's coming from in these different angles. If she just had her son, that would be enough. Like, she didn't need to have anything else. She could have either just had her son or still be married to the father. Like, that could, the, all of that is fine. Having yeah. this husband in here has added nothing. Like, like I said, even earlier when it was like, you know, who was Jacob going to call? He called his mom and then he skipped over his stepdad, yeah. who clearly does love him. Like, we've seen tons of love on yeah. the show for him. He's waiting at his game for him. He knows his stepdad's going to pick up. His dad yeah. is waiting for him, right? So it's just yeah. like, why didn't you call him? Yeah, I think, you know, this show is trying to get across some very important messages. I think it's just, it's a little bit mixed in how it's executing some of them. But I think if we just stay focused on what's happening with June, what's yeah. happening with Daniel, yep. Errol, like this is yeah. the heart of this show. I wish that this episode actually took a couple further steps when it comes to all of that. Like the closest thing we got was Donna hearing, you know, the message from Carla, the <laughs> Hayes Lane caller, but we didn't actually get that many more clues that are going to free Errol at the end of the day. No, the only thing that feels like where we got to with Errol is that I've been saying this since the beginning. I think Tony, I think him are involved yeah. in what actually happened and they brought a side of the story to Daniel before he, you know, came in on everything. So they, they fed him what they wanted him to see. We just saw this on another show, the most recent episode of Death and Other Details of that yep. idea of like kind of leading a witness that maybe they were leading Daniel in a way where it was kind of like, oh, did you, you know, oh, you heard something? Did it sound like metal? It's like, oh yeah, it did sound like, but yeah. you've, you've planted that in their head where maybe it didn't actually sound like that at all. Yeah, like that stuff absolutely does happen. Now, I just, I hope in the final episodes, they can stick this landing. Yeah. They can sort of tie things together. We will see, but that is our take on Criminal Record Season 1, Episode 5. Yeah. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss more updates. You can click on that box right there if you want to watch our most recent Criminal Record reaction. Also, join our Patreon. We have a link in the description mm -hmm. below. We have all sorts of exclusive content. Thank you to our patrons for your Thank support. You. We'll see you here next time.